When you think back to the best exotics in all of Destiny, your mind probably shifts towards the Galahorn, the Anarchy, Outbreak Prime, Icebreaker, and more. These exotics aren't just great in gameplay, they're followed with the fantastic tales of how the Destiny community acquired them. There's something so special about an exotic weapon's journey to get to a player's hands, and if you're unaware of those journeys, you don't like them, whatever the case, not only am I here to tell you the stories, I'm also here to tell you that this one in particular is one of my absolute favorites. This is the tale of a weapon that was stuck inside of a mysterious box. This is the tale of a weapon so strong, it's still being used today. And finally, this is a weapon with a history as rich and mysterious as its sad and tragic tale. This is the story of the Izanagi's Burden. Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video as well as the music too. In this video, I have hidden 15 codes from Gamersubs as a thank you for watching my videos. You said you didn't want a giveaway, but we're doing it. Pay attention and look out for these 15 codes and be sure to redeem them on the Gamersubs website with the link down below. If you want Gamersubs in general, we love it over here. You can always use code EVAN. All right, get to scouting. The year is 2018 and Bungie is coming off of probably the biggest jump in quality for Destiny since the Taken King and Rise of Iron. No longer is Destiny 2 this game that was doomed to fail. In fact, it's so good that players are now doing raid races for 19 hours to complete the newest raid. How can Bungie take the momentum and bring it to the next level? What can Destiny provide that makes it more appealing than ever? That was the question I'm sure everyone at Activision and Bungie were asking too. So, with the help of High Moon Studios, Bungie was able to deliver the very first season of Destiny's model that wouldn't ever leave again. And they absolutely crushed it with Black Armory. Some people were skeptical, as they still are, for the time-gated content. And with Bungie not releasing everything at once in this new model, players just didn't like a drip feed style. I would say that this whole year would be something Destiny players are killing for now in terms of weekly content. But back then there was just that much in Forsaken, and releasing content in a weekly format was not an established method. Bungie was turning into epic games. Hell, all of gaming had to keep up with Fortnite's model. What do you think? Do you like this model for Destiny or not? Let me know in the comments. Not only was this my personal favorite season ever made, but it was the season of the strongest weapons ever made in Destiny. This season had weapons so strong I think they deserve other videos of their own, and activities for focused farmable loot. And it was not only capped off with a raid, but also the esteemed Niobe Labs, a community puzzle so grand it had hundreds of thousands of eyes on it at all times. It was the most experimental and most innovative I have seen Bungie in a long time, and to get it so right the very first time deserves some major credit. The Black Armory would come out on December 4th of 2018, and the first forge, the Volunder Forge, would come out with it. This forge had three weapons to acquire, and wow, this was a tough thing to complete on day one. See, it's too hard for most as I start. That alone pisses a lot of people off. You know, it's the first time Bungie's ever done something like that. It is jarring. So the only way you were even going to get close to beating it on day one was grinding a bit first or being a highly coordinated, high skilled group. And even with that, you still had to use some very specific tactics in order to win. This was so hard in fact that the forge had to be lowered in difficulty because people were struggling so hard to beat it. The forge also had some interesting parts to it, like the hidden map in the room and symbols spread throughout the room. For today's video, we will focus on the other mysteries, the mysterious box underneath the Lunder Forge, and the floating drones. The box was pretty easy to find, but the drones would only show up during round two of the forge and float on either side of the arena. If Bungie had kept the difficulty of the Lunder Forge what it was on day one, then I could see these drones being hard to kill under the time crunch. But because it was a lot more accessible by day two, these were pretty easy to focus on. Later in the week, Bungie would come out with Gofanon Forge, and another strange map, and these drones. Later on, Bungie would drop Izanami Forge with new weapons, the map, and more drones. And we'll get to the last forge soon. The forges were lifted and the rotation was nice with plenty of legendaries to be acquired, and a nice focus form of loot for Destiny players. 
There was lore that was tremendous and a raid to play every week for still the best Sparrow in the game, the best shotgun in the game at the time, and the strongest raid exotic ever made in Anarchy. The mysterious box quest would take a drastic turn on January 8th, however, with Niobe Labs. Welcome to the beginning of the actual way to get our mysterious exotic, Izanagi's Burden. This was Niobe Labs, and it was absolutely confusing and revolutionary. There has never been something quite like Niobe Labs ever created for gaming, and this puzzle would combine puzzle solving with a time crunch and with Destiny gunplay against the toughest enemies. Even more, this one made players have to understand the story of Niobe and be familiarized with the symbols and weapons from Black Armory. So I hope you like paying attention when you were in lore school and had all those forge weapons at the ready. There was multiple rounds of teamwork required and boss fights to be had. And once that final round was beaten by Glad, Clyde, and Krusty, history was made. Oh, we did it! We did it! We did it! Yo, let's go! Let's go! Let's fucking go, dude! This was for the prize of unlocking the last forge, Bergugia and some cosmetics for completing the puzzle. But this wasn't the only reward from Niobe Labs. The mysterious box needed two more drones from this forge, and the toaster that almost burnt down my house was also obtainable here. This is another type of activity Destiny players are craving for the game, and I would love to see another community puzzle like Niobe, hopefully without a tragic conclusion to the story. After history was made, the quest could officially begin, and the first steps was to kill a bunch of Leviathan Watchers, those robots in the underbelly of the Leviathan. So input that code and solo these steps nice and easy. After a bit more filler, you had to complete a Bergugia Forge, and for players at the time, Bergugia was 650 power, so it was max difficulty for the season. Now here comes the really tough part of the quest, RNG being added. After inserting all of the keys into the mysterious box, Ada One needed an obsidian crystal to power the box. This was pure RNG from the weekly bounties for the Black Armory. You could get two weeklies per character per week, so six chances max per week to get a rare bounty from the weekly bounties. These bounties are incredibly rare. We're talking there was a triumph for completing a small amount of them rare. So there's the RNG in place, and sometimes if you were unlucky enough, it would take up to a whole month to get one of these bounties. After this, complete the Shattered Throne, which was only available every three weeks back in Forsaken. So if you didn't have the bounty in time, you're just going to have to wait. After that, just do the Sunset and Strike the Pyramidian, and then a final send-off mission killing the villain of Black Armory named Civix. Finally, the Izanagi's Burden was in the hands of Destiny players, and oh man, it was incredible. Shoot. Nice, dude. Nice flicks. Well, that's free. Izanagi's Burden is the most unique sniper I have ever seen. With a design so slick and so unique, it's hard to not just appreciate it on looks alone. And the ornaments for the weapon are also slick too. Izanagi's Burden is a 90 RPM sniper with 4 shots in the magazine, and with the exotic perk Honed Edge, which is such a satisfying sound, it had become my stream follow alert sound. The Honed Edge perk is exactly why Izanagi's has become such a staple of an exotic. It combines all the shots into the mag into one powerful single shot that also has a nice sound to it. Izanagi's Burden would also have Outlaw and insane reload speed after shooting the Honed Edge shot and loading the shot into the mag. It was a legend in not only Raids and Shattered Throne, but also in the Crucible where if you had all four snipes loaded, you could one-shot leg someone. Izanagi's Burden quickly became the power fantasy of Final Round from Destiny 1, while having the most unique aesthetic and functionality of any sniper Destiny has ever made. It's a magnificent exotic, and there's a reason why Bungie put this one as a part of advertising for a season all about using the most powerful weapons in Destiny's history. Izanagi's was definitely powerful, but Bungie would also release a certain mountaintop grenade launcher pinnacle in the special ammo slot. And with Anarchy quickly dominating the exotic game and Whisper still having infinite ammo, it was hard to get people excited at first for the power potential of Izanagi. Until it got a catalyst. 
In the season of opulence, the Izanagi's Burden Catalyst would be given for maxing out the Chalice of Opulence and completing a heroic menagerie. This catalyst made Izzy stronger, 20% stronger with Honed Edge. Now, Izanagi was a big time contender for the best exotic option in the game, especially with Whisper nerfed in opulence, but it would take a bit longer for this one to get the proper love it deserved. In Shadowkeep, it did get that love. Bungie would buff all snipers in preparation for Shadowkeep, and Izanagi benefited greatly from this. It was already strong, but with the season focused on champions, armor 2.0, nerfs to weapons that made Season of Opulence very easy, and infinite reload going away across the board, Izanagi was the next one up. Combined with the fact that Divinity, a trace rifle with the ability to not only debuff targets, but also apply a crit hit bubble to them was introduced, this sniper could shine. Not to mention a lot of players would widely accept the Izzy Go meta, which was reloading Izanagi, then quickly sprinting forward while swapping weapons for an insanely fast swap for higher DPS. This way of doing damage easily made Izzy the best option, as it could align with the auto-loading holster internal timer that Wendigo had, as well as just being satisfying to click the crit with. All of this was only helped with Divinity and the sniper buff, and the newest Garden of Salvation raid boss was a critical hit boss meaning that weapons like Izzy were the best option anyways. This weapon would go on to dominate for a while, until... Well, you know what's coming. Just, just cut it off, rip it off like a band-aid. The nerf. Izanagi's burden would get nerfed very hard in February of 2020, and not only snipers across the board were nerfed, but this one was in particular. But Izzy would get hit the hardest losing not only damage with Honed Edge, but losing Outlaw and the reload speed in general. Izzy would get no distractions in place of Outlaw, and it's just not the same. There was something so satisfying about popping an enemy's head and being able to reload the gun really fast. And with no distractions, it isn't really helpful for the sniper, even in PvP. Time would pass and players would get more creative than ever, even opting into using the Billy Billy strategy, which was popularized by a Chinese streamer on the site, Billy Billy and involved just a crazy amount of swapping for damage. This may break some fingers to pull it off, but it proved that Izzy wouldn't lose its potential power, and even today, Izzy is a part of a lot of the highest potential DPS builds in the game. It may have been lost, but hot swapping still lived on with Izzy. Oh yeah, hot swapping was also nerfed down the road, and now requires some even harder steps to pull off. It's controversial whether it was a good change or not to nerf hot swapping, but I'm curious to know what you think. Do you think this method of dealing damage should have been removed? Let me know in the comments. Izanagi's Burden is still one of the top options for DPS in Destiny, and even being a part of the most recent world's first raid clear, it isn't going anywhere. It's easy to see why this weapon became a staple, and hopefully with the community story about this weapon, you can understand the sheer amount of passion the community has for this gun. Speaking of that, we should probably touch on the other side of the story with this weapon. Izanagi's Burden may sound familiar if you're familiar with the Shinto mythology with Izanagi and Izanami. I won't go too deep into it, but just know according to Shinto mythology, they're responsible for creating fishing out of the main islands of Japan with a magical spear. The Burden part in Shinto may refer to the death of Izanami and the curse brought to Izanagi. Not too sure there, but the in-game story of the sniper is a powerful one too. When we meet Ada-1, the exo who gives us the sniper, she is not trusting and definitely full of guilt over something. As it turns out, she was created by the founders of the Forge named Henrietta Mayrin. Ada, or Adelaide's mother, made the call to turn Ada into an exo. The armory itself was made as a preparation for the end of the world due to the Dorito ships. It's why the weapons are so strong and Adelaide was an exo who had the ability to be a forge herself to craft weapons. Ada didn't trust us because Lightbearers had forced her to make weapons against her will, and had caused plenty of harm and even death to the founders of the Forge. Eventually, with the help of others, she learns to at least reluctantly work with us, and with the mysterious datapad quest, trust us. The Izanagi's Burden is the ultimate amount of guilt for Ada, as it tells the story of sacrifice from one of the Armory's founders, Yuki Sato. I have it, I say filling Henriette's gaze piercing through me. The Exo holds her back. 
Inside that head of hers, I know she's screaming for me not to do it. But I have to. It's the kind of thing one does for love. The burden one takes on. I refuse to look back at her. I can't let those eyes stop me. What you want? The Exo doesn't have it anymore. I do, I tell the man with the drone. Tears are streaming down Henriette's face now. She's shaking her head. I still can't look. I know the feelings that would flow through me if I did. Yuki, no! Please don't! Henriette cries, only to be interrupted by the man. Not so fast, friend. I've rarely seen her tears. She's not normally one to make them. Usually, I'm the one who needs comforting. Needs my eyes dried. And she's always the one to do it. Fearless Henriette. Well, Hen, today it's my turn. Today I save you. The man scowls. His voice grows sharper. <sighs> Hand it over, then. I won't ask twice. I nod, and I try to stay calm. I try to use it to lure him in. A false sense of security. I'm just going to reach into my bag now, I tell him. He shakes his head. Not so fast, friend. He takes a few steps, stopping an inch away from me, the barrel of his cannon in my face. Let's keep any potential wrong moves to a minimum here, please. Then he nods for me to go ahead. I'm absolutely relieved. He took the bait, and now he'll pay the price. I can't go just yet, though. I need just... one more glance. One last look at those eyes of hers. I can't help it. It's too late now, anyway. My hand is in the bag, and I've already pulled the pin. No turning back. My eyes dart to the side, to hers. They lock. One last time. I'm at peace. I let her know with a smile. I hope she finds hers. I swear she's in my head, hearing me say goodbye. It's these stories that really add weight to the weapons we use, and the burden of this magical sniper spear is the sacrifice Yuki made by blowing herself and the robber up to save Henrietta and Ada. It makes me wonder if this guilt and this burden is why the weapon was inside of a mysterious box and scattered all around the forges. Maybe as a way of spreading Yuki's ashes around the universe. So think about that every time you take a shot from this weapon, and never forget the greatness it truly holds. The Izanagi's Burden A burden of great sacrifice and overbearing guilt. The story of a weapon the Destiny community had to solve a mysterious box to hold and dominate with. A magical spear that had been the talk of an entire DLC, and then made only sharper in the time to come. A weapon that is now a part of the highest damage builds in all of Destiny, but at the cost of a hospital build to make it happen. Hopefully this story shines a light on why Izanagi's is something truly special. Thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, do all the smashing things like subbing, commenting, etc. Also watch my live stream since I'm there every single day, and join my socials like TikTok, the Clips channel, and everything else. Thank you everyone, and until next time, enjoy some bloopers. Oh my god. It's finally done. I take my I take my brother's place. Fight me now. 25, I think. Damn dude, they're those fucking Scorpius. Yikes.